Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. I even know what day of the week it is, even though I was up all night last night. I didn't fall asleep until 8 o'clock this morning. Thank you for running out of Benadryl. And now somebody's car alarm is going off. There we go, they fixed it. Anyway, um, to all of my East Coast family and friends, so, so sorry about your snow. It's been raining here which is, that's about as bad as it gets, honestly. But it, when it rains here, it rains profusely during the rainy season. And uh, anyway, I said in my last video that I had a funny story that I wanted to tell you guys. And it's maybe not so funny when I tell it, but it was hysterical at the time. Um, with all the snowfall um, on the East Coast, and we got quite a bit of snowfall in the Sierras and Tahoe and and over the past, um, over I guess the past two weekends, and so I was thinking about the snow and thinking about you know I'm a frequent visitor to Tahoe, although I'm not very frequent in the winter time. I've gone a couple of times, but out here there are chain requirements. If you don't have an all-wheel drive vehicle um, and there's snow, they make you pull over, buy chains, and put them on or have somebody install them. Um, and I don't want to be messing with that hassle. I drive a convertible. It's not an all-wheel drive car. Um, anyway, but <clears throat> anyway, so I started thinking about Tahoe, and the other day I was watching a show on Animal Planet called The Bear Whisperer, and it was kind of hokey. It was cool, but it was kind of hokey, and the Bear Whisperer um, was chasing after some bears that had gotten into residential communities and just <clears throat> watching him drive through I thought god that looks just like Tahoe and I thought maybe it was like Pioneer Trail in South Lake Tahoe um, that he was going along because the houses there looked a lot like you know mountain houses or mountain houses that they all pretty much look about the same um, the ones in Tahoe are actually pretty nice overall and uh, so I was watching this show and it made me think about, I guess, would have been about six and a half years ago, and I was still married, and my husband and I were pretty much on our outs. It was, I think, one of the last trips that we ever had together, and my law firm that I was working for at the time had planned a um, camping weekend in Tahoe, and we were camping at this place called Camp Richardson, which is a pretty nice campground. They have cabins. They have camping areas and that sort of thing. So we drove up there and um, I don't think anything spectacular happened the first night. Um, oh yes it did. <laughs> but um, it wasn't quite as funny as the second night. But um, one of my girlfriends that I worked with had came up, uh, not the first night, but the second night. So Saturday night she came up and she got there kind of late. Um, and But we were going from campsite to campsite to visit some of our other friends, um, you know, or, or co-workers or ex-co-workers that were camping up there the same weekend. And it was pitch black when we were walking back to our little caravan of camp, of tents and campsites. And um, as we were walking by, I just remembered walking through um, a couple of trees. We didn't even have a flashlight with us. And we were just going, you know, walking along. And I remember walking through these two trees and feeling something very furry rubbing up against my legs. And it was like a really dense, thick fur. It wasn't a dog fur. And I didn't do anything. I, it just kind of freaked me out, but I didn't, I didn't act startled. I just kept walking. And I didn't hear anything moving behind us afterwards. But it didn't take me long to figure out that I had just brushed up against a little brown bear. And, oh, good grief. But they're so tame. I mean, that's such a popular campsite. Um, and bears are all over that place all the time. Um, the first night that we stayed, um, a lot of our friends had SUVs. And for whatever reason, um, could have been too many beers on everybody's part or cocktails or whatever around the campfire. Um, but nobody thought to bring the food that we had on our community picnic table and put it, lock it up inside their cars. And you know, a lot of the places had little um, little gadgets that you can stick your food in and then you hoist it up the tree. 
so that the bears can't get to it. I never got that because they do climb trees, right? But uh, anyway, so we didn't, and I had my cooler right outside of my tent, and it had lots of goodies in it, but my cooler didn't get touched. However, our firm, our firm cooler, <laughs> oh, the next morning we came out, and it was kind of a mess. It wasn't too, too bad, but that cooler had bear claw marks on the front of it. It still does to this day, um, but it was hysterical. So then the very next night, we all were packing it in kind of early. A lot of us had gone into into town and um, gone gambling. And um, I think at that time, Caesars, yeah, Caesars was still there, which I think is now the Mount, Mont Blue Casino, I think. But anyway, we came back. Ironically, I was the designated driver, and they had a checkpoint. And I got a key ring that was like, thank you for being a designated driver. <laughs> anyway, that was just kind of funny. I know I was. I, I was a good girl. Um, but anyway, we went back to the campsite. My guy and I, my husband, not my guy. He was never really my guy. But my husband and I were getting into an argument. And he was pouting because everybody else was around the campfire. I wanted to go join them. He did not. Um, anyway, so then we all kind of pack it in early. And it was an interesting little thing because there was a couple that, um, let's just say, <laughs> they were kind of a secret couple, but they left their lantern on inside their tent, which you could see through, and you could see them coupling. <laughs> and so I just kind of zipped up my tent and went, okay, I don't need to see that. But then um, all of a sudden, we started to drift off. And there's a ruckus going on in the big tent in between a whole bunch of our tents, which had the firm runner in it and two two other secretaries or clerks or something like that in it. And um, all of a sudden, the runner, who is such a sweetheart, oh, God, he's just a wonderful kid. And um, I say kid, he's the same age as my guy, but my guy is substantially younger than I am. He's even younger than my ex-husband. Um... But anyway, so all of a sudden he's on a cell phone and he dials, I guess, 911. And it wasn't a joke to him, but he called up and he said, Uh, yeah, yeah, I need to make a report. And he's like, Yo, we're at the, um, at the Richardson campground and, uh, there are bears in the woods. Seriously, he actually said that. And I'm sure that. The police officer must have been like, or the park ranger, whoever it was he called, must have been like, well, yeah, it's the woods. There's going to be bears. But I guess they came out and checked it out. And the funny thing was, is that, I mean, that was funny in itself. Who calls and says there's bears in the woods? He was dead serious. He thought that it needed action. <laughs> but uh, the next morning when we got up and, you know, everybody was getting ready to pack it in for the day and uh, and head back into town. But the people that were camping across the, the stone roadway, um, it was a family with young children. They got the heck out of there because the only thing that was left, you know, their tent was gone, their car was gone, but all you could see was that their screened, netted um, dinner tent was completely ripped to shreds by the bears. And you know, they weren't bugging people. They weren't attacking people. They just wanted the food. And so that was kind of funny. So that was my funny story. Bears in the woods. Oh, God. <laughs> it was so funny. Anyway, I don't have anything else to say today um, except for my East Coast family. Thaw out. Don't break your back shoveling. It will end, and spring will be here before you know it. All right, you guys, I'm going to go. So I'll see you later. Bye.